We're live, it's Sam Michael, and we are looking at um, project metrics and project scope and things like that. And uh, so I'm just trying to, why isn't the screen share? Is it going to hide behind the other thing? Right. Um, just looking at integrating the Slack trends thing. And um, <coughs> yeah, so it seems to be throwing up an error that we don't get on the individual gem. And the reason that I, th I mean, I sort of assumed that that was, I was not on the right code. Um, but I basically, I ran bundle update. And so the gem file.lock here tells me that we're on this version, like C9269, which according to here, uh, let's just go there. Uh, hey, Penny, long time no see. Um, that's the very latest. That's the that's the same thing. Um, right. Uh, I mean, I just merged the pull request that you did with the test, showing that that error doesn't occur on master. And in fact, yes, the well, I've got. Um, uh, uh, oh, that's annoying. Um, I've got loads of statements in there, but basically. I'm sort of taking it apart, but it's all it's all green locally as far as I can see. Um, the query that's running is the same. Um, if I pull the Slack trends there, like I've got, I just I sort of inspected to see that the same cred the, you know credential data coming in was the same. Um, go on. What are you actually? Like, where is the Rails app at? Can I see that? Because I know what my, I know what our code does. Yeah, yeah. So the Rails app. Um, the Rails app is here, um, and config project metrics. Basically, it just has now. You've you know, added Slack trend metric. Okay. Yeah, the Slack and trend. What are What are you doing to initiate the error? Uh, basically, I'm trying to run uh, a, a resampling, which which is what you know it hits a refresh. It's a rake so, task. It's not actually a rake task at the moment. It's just I've created a method here, which is like resample metric. <coughs> so it goes and gets the credentials hash. It you know creates an instance of the class with the credentials hash, and then it calls refresh on it. And if we go over uh, here. This one, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. So this is basically I'm I'm here. I'm in the the. This is just the Rails environment. Uh, we've only got one project so website. One. I'm calling it and I'm saying, do you know, resample Slack trends. So it goes in here. Uh, I previously checked that the credentials are all correct. Um, it gets to here, where. I was seeing that the Y positions includes a couple of these things. Not a number, okay. Yeah, which is underlined from the scores for these things are not a number. But they're also not a number in the gem, and that doesn't seem to cause a problem in the gem. Um, I mean, uh, I'm looking at gem, I noticed that the... Uh, Slack trends thing he, here also has these some not a number things in there, and so that image is generated with some not a numbers hanging around in the in the gem without throwing this particular exception. And I was just looking at the place where uh, the exception is thrown is actually on this line inside the Rasm gem. Really? Yeah. Um, so I've stuck a breakpoint in there. And what I was hoping was that now in this one, in this, if I do next here, if I do here, oh, okay, so now I've come into my, so this is now I'm inside the Rasm gem. And this is the line where now this. This line here 
causes the problem. Um, so, really, that that's the one that blows up. That that that's the previously from the, the stack trace. That that's the one that blows up. I mean, I wonder if it's to do with there's like some other gem. I mean, here that should yes. Yeah, so this is this is the um, this is the error that I get. No implicit conversion of symbol into integer. Well, it's being initiated by the call to the, to the new online one, on the line forty two apparently, right? You stepped into that, right? Yeah, yeah. This is, this is. I mean, the stack trace that I posted previously. I mean, we can see in the stack trace if we go back up. We have the stack trace here. Yeah. So we can see here that yeah, line forty two. I mean. This is one of the things, I mean, the, the, the Rasm gem looks lovely, but then, well, I don't know, actually, maybe. So the funny thing here is, I was going to say, like, oh, it, it seems to be obscuring the nature of the bug. But actually, it look, it kind of looks here like the bug, there's, some, there's something slightly weird going on. Like, so it's at the point that svgimage.rb is created here, and it's initialized. Uh -huh. um, and... So then it comes in here. Now, it's interesting here is like params is the number 120 on this initialize. And then here, it's trying to treat it as an array, uh, a hash, which obviously it's not. Um, so that, and that should be coming well, from the new statement. I don't quite yeah. get why that's not happening. In the in the in the uh, in in the main no I agree I agree I like I don't understand at the moment why why that's happening. Um, the uh, I've got I've got here. I mean this is this is the see th this is the system. Um, this is the gem. This is the code here that well, the Rails app thinks it's using, right? And so. We can see here that we're passing in these two numbers, like the two new values there. Yeah. And that sort of seems to be slightly different. I mean, I, I wonder if there's a different in the there's a difference in the Rasm gem that's being used between the two. Um, there must be. Yeah. I mean, if I do, if I so, go over here and I do bundle open Rasm. And so if we look here at SVG image on line 426, yeah, it's a completely different gem. So that's on Rasm 061. And what do you have locally? Oh, okay, so I have 071. So I think probably... Pure is just the lockdown, the gem. Yeah, so I think that's... that's my, probably... In my gem. Yes, it looks like we're... I mean, the, I, I guess, yeah, what would happen is if, if the, this one... So is using Rasm 061. Okay, and so there's a more recent version of the gem, which I have inadvertently updated to in the project scope MVP. Because it's not requiring that, it's just requiring the project metric slack trends. But so that's gone in and it's got 071 there. So that's the problem. I didn't even know there was a new one. How could mm. there be well? That's right, because I thought you were, yeah you were saying it was kind of in, inactive for a few years. And if you ran bundle update with the, like oh, he just updated it like two days ago. No way. Why? I guess like in the excitement of knowing that you were using it, he was like, "Wow, people need this. We need." Yeah, <laughs> really? Uh, oh, who knows? I mean. I, I, you know, I mean, that would be lovely to think that we, that you know, activity on Agile Ventures was, you know, the, the, around the world, people were waiting with bated breath for us to start using things, and then they would. But no, I mean, there's no way that he would know that you'd started using it, particularly, is there? Uh, probably not. I mean, or well, I guess the only way would be is that you've pushed the gem for. We've. It's obviously. The fact that we're using it is public knowledge on GitHub. I mean, that we had that funny thing the other week where um, 
uh, Slack found out very, very quickly about our, um, you know, token. He's now, he's now like some professor. This guy. Yeah. You know, like UCLA or something, I think. I right, know. right. Yeah, I mean, it's probably Minnesota. It's probably just a coincidence. Uh, I mean, he there's no, but like, yeah, he he's done he's done nothing on GitHub publicly uh, for quite a while, and then suddenly, yeah, it's the summer. He's, I mean, the interesting thing is there that's like a breaking. He's changed the interface of the way in which SV like, but they're like, okay, here, right? He's now passing in a, he's updated the documentation as well. There, I guess. He's like pulled in like years worth of commits. Apparently, Burton bump to seven point one commits on minor fixes to work with recent versions of other things committed three days ago. I guess this is all the same person. Uh, that's that's nothing big. Oh, he's got like a pull request from somebody. But that only, that's on the documentation only. Zytus master, merge branch, Zytus master. There we go. Well, that, that's, yeah, so he's got like. Someone did a lot of work, yeah. Yeah, there's a major restructuring. And it like sat open for years and years and years. It's weird as shit. All was right. That, was that actually a pull request or that was just, it's got three closed. It was a pull request. Yeah, refactored Rasm Gem. Like totally changed everything. Right. From two thousand and thirteen. Okay, there you go. Wow. That's funny. Well the the slightly parallel with that is um I was working on the local support thing the other day and oh, I didn't even remember now the thing I was fixing. Uh, oh, it was this issue with the with the the cucumber not returning the, the the right status, and I got that fixed by ultimately upgrading to Ruby two point three point one. Um, but then the Jasmine thing started failing, and I was like, "What's going on?" Oh, but it turns out that the Travis people were like upgrade were, were testing an upgrade to IPv six in the background, and it was oh. driving driving me absolutely nuts. And um, yeah. yeah, there we go. Okay. So I guess what we need, uh, I'll just uh, lock down. Yeah, you can put a requirement to zero six one in the. Point uh, zero six one. I think. Uh, yeah, that was uh, zero point six point one. Zero point six point one. Yeah. So you're just gonna push that straight onto master. I probably should just push it straight on the master. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Hold on a second. Put back into there. Humble. There, I open a pull request. I can just pull it in. Mm -hmm. uh, merge from 
there done. Right. Okay. So in principle, then I can go to project scope MVP here and exit there. Uh, now he's going to be sad. Huh? I said now he's going to be sad. Oh, this guy, because we're not using his latest version. Well, uh, maybe we'll update to that at some point. Uh, okay. So now Slack Trends is at a new value. So So then this takes a long time. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Yeah. Um so I um uh, There was some other like gem for creating SVG graphs. Mm -hmm. That was potentially usable, but the licensing was wrong. Okay, because it was GPL, mm. Mm -hmm. which isn't compatible with yeah. MIT. Right. Yes. The great merit of this gem was that it was MIT licensed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's at a different, you know, it's a different level of abstraction. This is like a, for describing SVG images in general. Mm -hmm. It's not specifically for creating graphs, you know, like plots or whatever. Hmm. No, sure. But somebody could take this RASM gem and make a, a gem for plots, I'm sure. Right, was the other, but both both gems were at SVG, like, not for plots, right? They're both for just making uh, no, The images. other gem was actually for, specifically for graphs. Oh, really? Okay. SVG graphs, but it was based on, it had GPL licensing, mm -hmm. because it was at one time, it's like an, it, it was a it, it was a really quite old gem mm. that had been updated throughout the years at various points, so it was still usable. Mm. But like, I think it it's it, it, like when I read the history of it, it mm. people were saying, "Oh, it was it was a loose port of something that had been in Perl." Mm -hmm. which itself was based on some underlying older something that was like GPL or something. Right, know. right, right. Well, that's the thing about GPL is viral. So if there was some original thing that it was relying on that had a mention of a sniff of GPL, then that would need to be, you know, followed all the way through. Um, Correct. Yeah. Um, and and uh, GPL was much more popular years ago. It certainly was. Yes, that was that was what I used for a number of things. Um, but so, and you you, you prefer like you prefer this to the ERB. Uh, kind of yeah. Yeah, it it certainly looks. It's more declarative. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all green. There, uh, waiting for that. I mean, yeah, anyway, if this works, I will probably just go ahead and deploy it, and then I will move on from this for a moment. If it feels like, I mean, the how many projects do you have in now? Uh, you mean in the, when you mm, in, this Rails app. in this Rails app only has a single project? Okay, so this is just this is just doing the single. This now is. Resampling Slack trends only. You have buy bug statements in there. Uh, no, I removed them. Even inside the jam. Yeah, I went through while you were updating your wow. thing. I went through. Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, and of course, it's much faster on here once you've got the once the VCR is recorded. It, yeah. Right, right. Um, so that, I mean, it, it, there's kind of that. It, it, it's, it's sort of a pressure there. 
I would say. Optimized query. Yeah, and, and at least as much as this Slack trends are the same as the Slack one, could benefit from doing that channel history. Is no, not is it? All oh, right, could doing the channel history now that we understand how to to, to um, unpack the timestamps. Yeah, Cause it, right, because it could be a instead of at the moment it's like there's a query for each. So that's interesting. What happened? Uh, so it's got the same issue. It's still hitting Rasm 071, which is strange because I ran bundle updates here. But I guess that's, I, I mean, I wonder, it, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I guess the issue there is, Somehow, so that's still. See, that's annoying. That takes so long to find that out. Uh, so we've. So Rasm not specified in there. Rasm is still at zero point seven one in here. I mean, I can. What's, what is? Oh well, can you tell what commit you're on? Uh, I can here. It tells me I'm on this. The Slack trends there is on this commit here seven D. Which is the one that you've just? Yeah, I see that that merge without the squash creates that little triangle there. So, um, uh, do I need to actually bump the version number? No, you you. I don't think you do. Although maybe uh, it's got the latest code. Maybe it's not taking it into account like so here we're on rasm 6 1 and the gem file specifies that dependency um, mm -hmm. I guess the interesting question here would be if I just remove the gem file dot lock um, I mean it might be the case that the the bundle may not care if it's not a bump version right but in this case let's see here yeah that's interesting but so so it's still seven well one. but th but this is still seven one now even though like i deleted the entire gem file dot lock so this is pulled in um the slack trends it's on zero but see it's a, it's interpreting that as rasm greater than or equal to 0 0.6.1 oh According to this part of the gem file dot lock, so it seems like we we I think there's a different symbol, isn't there? It, there's like it's a little twiddly, it's like twiddle arrow or something like this. Um, so we've got like uh, gem file tendencies. I mean, let's have like a. The best way to because specify your dependencies. There, that's got an example of that. Learn more gem files. Most of the version, but is like greater than or so. It seems that greater than or equal to is what that defaults to. I think it is this, it, we need the twiddle greater than. Well, the, this symbol. It says that is identical to greater than or equal to. And less than 3.0. Yeah. But, but that, that's the thing, is that what the, it seems to imply, from what, what we're seeing there, that si simply naming, the jet, naming that number. Right means is equivalent to greater than or equal to whereas the twiddle equals is actually saying don't go up above that level or at least that's the way i'm reading that documentation at the moment which implies that the gem file here should have like this like so so if i do um bundle here let me look at the gem file lock there. 
Is there any mention of brass? Yeah, so then the dependency becomes this. Yeah, I just pushed it. Okay. So, uh, oh, I just get pulled, I get stashed. Uh, right, but so that's available there. So if I now do bundle here, add small and individual. Ah, oh, hmm. It's interesting. I also seem to be on a branch that I wasn't expecting to be on. That was the branch I did the pull request that is now on master. I just really. pushed, so. Yeah, no, I, well, I've got it. I'm just noticing that I'm on a branch here that I wasn't quite expecting to be on. But, uh, I, run. I ran bundle there. Let's not change anything else there. So now, Oh, I know, right. Well, I have to do bundle and it'll get pull me the last one down. Okay. Gemfile.lock. Now, that's still coming through with greater than or equal to Rasm 061. And Rasm is still on 071 there for some reason. That's very strange. Uh, Slack trends 000 from master 1E88F08. Um, I don't know what you did, but. Well, what I did was I deleted the, um, I deleted the gem file at lock for the project scope MVP. And I reran bundle so that that pulled in the very latest version of project metric slack trends. And we can, in fact, uh, that's not wrong. Uh, we can look here, bundle open projects metric. And so this is the gem file that you now have with the there. And the gem file lock specifies that RASM should be 061. So that's all in there, but running bundle. Did you, can you just delete the gem file.lock? That's what I just did. I just I deleted the gem file.lock back and I ran bundle. So it generated it again. And I was expecting running bundle there to and it brought back Erasm 7 1. So it seems. Like gem file is here. We're just asking for the project matrix slack trends. Uh, the gem file lock here appears to have Rasm 0.71 in it after having completely deleted it. Uh, so I don't know if that's that somehow like like and we can see here, the funny thing here is that this git operation here it seems to be saying greater than or equal to 0 0.6.1 mm -hmm. in this, you know, the revision that it's pulled down here, which kind of makes, like this, like the tracker API here has a, a fixed set there. Yeah, I really don't know. I mean, that's just kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, It, people are saying it should only allow bump of the last number. Hmm, right. But how does it work when it's in a gem? Is it like some different rules? I mean, I wonder if it's, I mean, that may be an issue that we're using it like over Git, 
rather than as a gem. And so maybe that's like somehow screwed up our dependency management issue there. And I'm just, what I just did there was I'm just forcing it to be like uh, on 061 in like what it sensibly should be, uh, given that the project metric Slack trends gem file specifies that we want this tilde greater than 0 0.6.1. Uh -huh. Leave that running and see if that actually resolves the issue, which I hope that it would. I guess we then have a separate issue. I mean, the we could try bumping the um, Slack trends uh, gem gem thing. Uh, I, I mean, I, although I can't see how that would affect it unless there was some sort of caching. Of, I mean, I guess, like... That's what I'm wondering. Is there caching going on? Right, is there caching going on? The bundle doesn't actually care about the... Committed only cares about the version. Right. The funny thing there is that when we do the bundle open, and it opens the thing, we actually see the changed uh, code, but maybe maybe under the hood, there's a separate sort of caching. And it, I mean, we, we were getting those funny errors. It's probably um, a good idea to bump the Slack Trends version number. That might shake things out. Um, Well, if that's running, I shouldn't move these other things. Okay, no, I put that on a. Oh, it is on. It's not. I, I was incorrect in what I was saying before. It's um, the stuff that I've got that's got the new gems in is actually on this um, branch twenty one. Adding more metrics and individual resampling. I haven't merged it to master yet. All right. Of course, perhaps we should just be forking the gem. That's another possibility. Although that that would seem unnecessary in these circumstances, or at least the dependency management is supposed to work. Um, well, this documentation, I, it's saying that there's versions. Oh, no, maybe I can get. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, twiddle twiddle whacker. Okay, it's called the twiddle whacker. That's good to know. Um, Do I need? Maybe I need to change it in the gem spec. Uh, yeah. Did you change it and did you then run bundle update? I did change. I did run bundle update, but I didn't change it in the spec. Ah, mm, that's interesting. Do you know what uh, I'm talking about? Slack? I do. Yeah, this that, that I brought up here. Yes, yeah. and we have a greater than or equal to in the gem spec. So that's okay, probably, that's probably the problem, isn't it? I mean, so yeah. that's interesting. That it feels like there should be a way to generate the gem spec from the gem file.
me push the uh, hit back. I guess that's what that's for, really. What the gem set is for? Well, there's dependency that DSL for declaring your dependencies is going to be used by bundle, probably. Yeah, I mean, it's used by bundle to generate the gem file. That, I mean, that seems unfortunate if um, you can have them out of sync. Like, you would, you would like the... Um, You know, what one one would like, you know, to be able to change the dependency in one place, and then all of the references to it would be updated. Uh -huh. So I just pushed it, uh, but Thanks. you already hard coded it or whatever. Right? Yeah. Be what awesome. did you do? Did you just lock it down in the file? You changed. I changed it over to what we expected it. Oh, not, right, and it's now it's now worked. But yeah, so I, I could now um, I could do the same thing here, which is I could run bundle update here, and we would expect to see it pull in the latest. I mean, what's slightly worrying about that? So we've now got Snack Friends new one there. I mean, what's slightly worrying about that is that you is that we can have the gem itself, and we can have run bundle update, and there's like a uh, you know, and, and the tests are all passing with the gem file dot log. But if we forget to update the dependencies in dot gem spec, then we're right. like Agreed. there's this problems down the line. So and that seems you know it seems maybe that's just the, how it is, right? You just have to part of your pre-flight check for releasing the gem is reviewing all of the values in your uh, the, the thing there. Hmm. Hmm. Feels like there should be a, a better way to do that. Uh, okay. So we've got that. And then if we now have a look at let's go to MVP. Yeah, so that's now about there. I guess the other thing I should, what I should do is I should remove the gem file lock and make sure that um, that relationship continues to exist. We should be able to go here and see a Slack friends metric. So those not a number here are being represented as um, like max values, I guess. Let's have a look at the gem file lock. Uh, yes, so we now get the expected versions of Rassen. Okay, well, we learned something about gem specs there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I guess I'm what I'm probably tempted to do is status there. Uh, we can see. See yeah. the beautiful. Uh, uh, get commits. Uh, this is updates to the latest Slack. Uh, correct. Rasm gem. Push on And uh, then we can do uh, Hiroku push. No, it's git push, isn't it? Git push staging uh, 21 mass. Ah, Sir. Uh, so that goes up to there. If we wait for that to there, I need to kill this. Think about it. Pulling all those in. He's not at 
Minnesota like I thought. No. He's, it's not UCLA, it's UC Riverside, sorry. Hmm. Mm. I think he got his PhD at Minnesota, but it says now he's moving. Oh yeah. To if you click through the link on his page, it says I will join the computer science and engineering department at UC Riverside as an assistant professor starting in the academic year of 2016 to 2017. Hmm. Hmm. I'm currently looking for motivated students who would like to carry on top-notch research while enjoying the sun in California. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a worthy goal in life. Indeed. Enjoy the sun in California. Well, I think life needs to be enjoyed. Otherwise, it's all a bit drab, really, isn't it? Um, I need to remember the sun. You know, yeah. It's winter here. Right, right. Yeah, I'd like to have more sun. Could remember that I could be in California. Indeed. If you already have a gem with a gem, you could generate a gem for your runtime dependencies. It seems like. It seems interesting there that the, 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 the bundler seems to be saying, like, if, if you've got your existing gem spec, then you would generate your gem file dependencies. But that feels like the wrong way around to me. I guess. So, did we look at the graph yet to see that it actually works? Uh, well, doesn't what we had a look at here. Now that was, I think that's old. Uh, that was, yeah, that was me getting some sort of different error. Now let's go back. So now, hopefully, we're deployed. We're deployed to staging. Uh, if I now go here. Um, I can take the, uh, this old P, P dot control E. If I take, can I kill that? Can I yank it back over here? I can't. That's annoying. Uh, So on the staging server, we've got both website one and local support. So in principle, this will now draw the graphs for those two projects, and we can see it on staging, and so can the rest of the world. Hoping that it's got the right gem. Well, hoping that the uh, key doesn't get banned. Well, that's that's another possibility indeed. Um, hmm. But uh, yeah. But so with with this, that sort of imply we've kind of we've, we I think we've got to prove like it's all you know all the stuff that the guys had in their original thing. We would now have in ours in one form or another, wouldn't we? Yes. Uh, I mean, Amanda. I mean, I've heard surprisingly little from Amanda over the last week or so um, apart yep. from that comment that he made yesterday but on one of the issues I opened about saying issue all optimization and and just make something work but I think we've got to the, the something is working right stage now yeah yeah oh that's is that done one thing or it's on two things it's done one we can go and have a look at the one okay here we go yeah Okay, so the local support one looks oh. nice. Uh, yeah, so proof of concept, job done, really, isn't it? Yep. Um, just lots of lots of polishing that could be done.
So what's your plan for the rest of the week? You you gonna do you can do the beach today, you gonna do some other fun things in the rest of the week? Uh no, not really. Oh. So I'll probably be around to pair. Cool. I mean not that pairing and agile ventures isn't extremely fun. Um, well I, I can I can tell. Uh, by how excited and you know you you just you 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 run off at the mouth bubbling with enthusiasm. Um, it's uh, yeah, but uh, it, I mean, great work getting these, you know, all of these individual things sorted out. Um, that's uh, you know, uh, ultimately one hopes that Amanda will be quite pleased with the whole setup. Um, and there's both. Berkeley swag. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of thing. Um, maybe you could send us some. Well, apparently they don't get much sun in San Francisco. It's uh, well, kind of hit and miss, but like here in the UK. Yeah. Well, I think I'm. Although I was supposed to get uh, this local sports stuff to do, but um, I'm probably going to go for lunch. I'm hoping. I think Berkeley is actually across the bay from San Francisco. Yeah, I think it is. You are. You, it is Oakland. I was, um, so, but I think I think um, I'm going to play this game, Watch Dogs Two, when it comes out. Oh yeah, what's that? That and it's it's like a hack. It's like this game mm -hmm. about how we have no privacy and stuff. Right. <laughs> it's got this like it's in cities. Like the first one was in Chicago. Oh yeah, this is this system called CTOS. That was like this government-sponsored, basically thing to spy on everyone in the city. Oh yeah, and like you play a hacker that runs around and can control the automated computer system. Oh yeah, and uh, uses it for his purposes. Mm -hmm. and now you're gonna play. And Watch Dogs 2, it's going to be set in San Francisco. Okay. And uh, they're going to have... Uh, you're going to be part of a hacker group called DeadSec, which is basically, like, anonymous. Hmm. And... So is this, is this a geolocation game, or it's, like, it's a game that you play... No, it's, like, know. a triple-A game. It's like right, right, right. Game. right, right. Right, right. Like, uh, they build out a lot... A lot of the Bay Area, like in a fictionalized form. Okay. And like the guiding principle is if it's like a, if it's like a tourist location, you'll it'll be there. Right, right. And like the sad thing is, mm -hmm. they have like Oakland and they have San Francisco and they have parts of that of Silicon Valley and stuff. Uh huh. But from what I I heard, journalists were saying for some reason Berkeley's not there. <laughs> So I wonder why that is. Good, yeah. Yes. Like why yeah. they left Berkeley out. Mm, mm. Interesting. Interesting. We'll try not to read too much into that. Well there we go. We've got there we go. So we've got Yeah, you know, Berkeley's like north of Oakland, which is kinda like mm -hmm. Oakland's kind of like more ghettoish. Yes. Yes. Which, I've I've seen I've seen documentaries about that part of the world. So that's kind of interesting that like Berkeley is direct, like there's directly southern neighbor is kind of like a, mm. yeah, of. yeah. Well, I think they have, um, you know, and the connection with the community colleges. I think they have a interesting mix of people coming through. Yeah. Um, so Slack trends is. Boom! 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 Uh. Yeah, and so then I was, it's interesting, I was wondering about, well, there's various little, I mean, I guess this, any any idea of what's causing this, not a number, presumably there's a division by zero somewhere. Uh, potentially. Yeah, anyway. Um, that's the key things. It's interesting, that, I mean, the, the size of the Slack metric is interesting, it also tells you that, like, the number of people who are kind of, like, registered interest in the Slack channel. Um, it can also you, gone. Can you, can you put an issue for that in the tracker, or in the on GitHub? For which uh, thing? For the non-number thing. One. So uh, the way to 
would just be to run the score. Yeah. Sorry. So, so again, I wasn't quite following. I say I said the way to track down that bug would yes. be to pull in the data for website one and test yeah. it and mm-hmm. run the score and see what it's doing, like why it's yeah. Well, I I, I did that and uh, we got no. We it's we actually ran the image, not the score. But yeah, right. But it, the image runs score in the background, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird. Well, yeah, but we need to step through the. The, the the score step by step right the right I mean the the thing wow. that I got where was it Am I, did I lose the oh here yeah I mean the the, the scores end up being like this uh, yeah so I mean I guess what I'll do is I'll close so like uh. Uh, turns out the base was uh, gem. Uh, and then I'll open a new issue here for um, get in website one beta. Uh, Okay. Right. All right. Well, have a great time at the beach, and I'll maybe see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Right. Bye for now.